good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Pravin Jethwa from Amazing Interactives. Uh, we're a UK-based company um, developing 3D software for the education market. So what I want to do just in the, last, in the next 20 minutes or so is just give you an overview of how we've been uh, working in the UK market, but then more recently gone into international uh, overseas market. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick overview of Amazing Interactive. So we're a 3D software company uh, developing 3D educational content for the last 10 years. And we've been pretty much working in the UK market um, with schools, uh, primary, secondary, special needs, uh, colleges, universities, and so on. So what we've done um, in the UK market is worked with a number of resellers, uh, distributors, and so on. And what we then decided to do is look at how we can follow this model overseas. And, and that's what we've been doing for the last few years. So what we did um, in the sectors that you can see there where we started working, we created a, a, a huge amount of momentum in developing the software um, for, the, for the UK market. And we were working very closely with, with the areas I've just mentioned. And one area was like the city learning centers. We were working with uh, a project called Building Schools for the Future. Now, as, as we were working with these, uh, up until about three or four years ago, um, Amazing Interactors was doing pretty well uh, within these areas. But with new changes, government changes, expenditure in education, a lot of the city learning centers which were around in the UK soon declined. And also things like the Building Schools for the Future project also was on its way out. So we were left with a sort of dilemma that we had a whole host of 3D content, 3D software for the education market, but there was no real market left in the UK that we could uh, cater for. So we thought the only way we can still survive in the education sector was really to look at how we can take our content abroad. And so we started looking at that, and some of the questions we asked ourselves, um, is our content exportable? Um, yes, it's been selling in the UK, so why not uh, sell it abroad? Um, and one of the things was, coming to like the BET show, we were getting a lot of inquiries from overseas markets through resellers, through distributors, through end users, wanting our content to be um, a potential product in overseas market. So we knew that our content would be viable for this. And obviously we needed uh, to increase our productivity and um, obviously financially as well. So we started to research these areas and one of the areas that um, we looked at or through was the UKTI. So they really supported us in helping us to get our product overseas internationally. And we started quite um, sort of with, a, with an action plan, talking to our local trade, international trade advisor, and just started the ball rolling in terms of how do we go about doing something abroad and making um, a success. So started off by doing our action plan with our uh, advisor. We then started going to the UKTI workshops, which uh, you can sign up to. Um, and then what's called an OMIS, so an overseas, uh, basically a, a research into the markets we wanted to look at. So we looked at several markets really, which were English speaking markets because all our software was all in, uh, in, in English at the time. So we looked at um, the US, which was one of the, the big areas that we wanted to get into and started to promote our products out there. And one of the most important things is to actually go and visit the, the country. And we took several trips out to America um, and started talking to resellers, distributors that were sort of already been prepped up by 
the UKTI uh, on um, the research that they conducted. So, so the outcomes from, from the help that the UKTI gave us was that they identified resellers, distributors, um, and even some end users for, for, for our software. So some of the, the, the other uh, research that we carried out in non-English-speaking sort of uh, English -speaking countries like China and Russia and some of the European countries, there was also a demand of our software in those places. Some of the challenges there basically became translation of our software, so we needed to do that. So we looked at how best we can uh, um, translate the software so it's catered for some of the European markets. Um, obviously, promotional material that we had to develop um, in the languages that we were looking at. So some of the barriers that we faced were to try and um, get over the, the hurdles in terms of languages um, and translation of our material. And I think all of these was all part of the, the sort of the lessons that we started to learn once we started to look at doing international trade. So, so really, um, where we got to now, uh, sort of three, maybe four years down the line, is we into a number of countries now, as you can see. We started off with the, the US market. Um, we've sort of gone into the Middle East, um, South Africa, the, the, the Russian, Baltic countries, um, and really sort of gone uh, a little bit further uh, into Denmark and Cyprus. And what was once, uh, what we thought was uh, an educational sector sort of dying is now up and running um, to a tune of nearly half a million pounds a year that we generate from overseas international markets now. So I think the lessons or the, the advice from, from Amazing Interactive's point of view of trying to do work and do um, international trade is a couple of things. One is to work very closely with the UKTI. They will support and give you the advice that's required and needed um, without saying you need to go and visit the countries, you need to spend time out there. Um, most of my time is spent sitting on an airplane and uh, going to various countries. There's a little bit of fun in that, but it's quite hard work to uh, manage it, especially if you've got families and so on. So, but it, the, the only sort of way to get across and do work internationally is to be in the country, talk to your distributors and use the services that UKTI are offering, um, whether it's just from a, a, an advisor's point of view, all the way up to doing trade missions and uh, the research that they can help you with. And also there's financial support that's uh, part of um, the UKTI that helped us to do trade missions and th they cover some of the costs, uh, certainly with uh, flights and uh, doing yeah, the trade missions and so on. So it, for us, really, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey, um, three, four years in the making, really, to get to where we are now internationally, but it's beginning to sort of pay off now. Um, and coming to the BET show really helps us to try and uh, keep that momentum going and visit uh, some of our overseas partners, distributors, and even the end users, so we know that it's all working quite smoothly and it's, uh, it's really yeah, beneficial to us. So that's really all I wanted to say about what we've done internationally and how we've managed to get there, but I think it's... Uh, it's a it's a long a long haul um, sort of battle to get get there and uh, got to sort of keep at it really. <laughs>